So we've talked about perpendicular bisectors and mid-segments in triangles. Now we're going to talk about angle bisectors. Angle bisector is a ray that cuts another angle, bisects another angle, meaning it cuts it into two congruent angles. And so the other thing we have to know is how you find the distance between some point and a line. And if I'm going to walk to a street, I'm not going to walk this way or this way. I'm going to walk perpendicularly. And so when I measure distance, I'm going to measure straight to the line. And what I mean by straight to the line is at a right angle. And so the distance from a point to the line is the length of the perpendicular segment. That's what we mean by we're going straight to the line. So I've constructed my perpendicular, uh, sorry, my angle bisector. So I've got an angle bisector, and G is that point on the angle bisector. And what we're going to try to prove is that G is the same distance from this side of the angle as it is from this side of the angle. And to do that, what I did is I constructed the perpendicular. And so I had to construct something that was perpendicular to this side of the angle, but that was going through this point. So I made this point the center and put the needle of my compass or the center of my compass right there, and I made this arc. And then these kind of become the end points of your perpendicular bisector. So now you make your arc, and you put your needle over here, and you make your arc, and there's your perpendicular bisector. Emphasis on the perpendicular because that's the distance from this point to the line, the shortest distance. And then same thing I did over here, made the two arcs, the big arc, to figure out these two endpoints, and I made the perpendicular bisector. I measured those two lines, I got 3.4. Now, if a point is on the angle bisector, it is equidistant. Remember that word we called equal distances, equidistant, from two sides of the triangle. So we have a point G. It's the same distance from this side as it is from this side of the angle every single time. Now, the converse of this is when you switch your P and your Q, meaning you sw switch the first part of your if and you switch the then, and so it becomes, well, if a point is equidistant from the two sides, then it must be on the angle bisector. And so if we know that this is equal distance, we know that it's on the angle bisector and we could say that those two angles are equal. And so we get our two theorems. So if a point is on the bisector of an angle, it's equidistant from the two sides. So we have this angle, we know that this angle is congruent to this. We know that we're using right angles and then we know that this point D is out here. And so what it proves is that DC is congruent to DB. And all you need is angle, angle, and then this reflected side to prove that those two triangles are congruent. Stuff from last chapter, remember? And then secondly, the converse is true, because if you know that this distance is the same as this distance, and I have right angles because that's how you measure distance. And I have um, this side right here in common because of reflexive property. Then I have two triangles that are congruent by HL. I can prove that this angle then is the same as that by CPCTC. And then it must be bisecting because those two angles are congruent. So, CBE, because 21 and 21 are the same, E is the same distance from C as it is from D. And I know it's the distance because these right angle marks are here, because that's how you measure distance from a point to a line. So if this is 31, then that has to be 31, because E is on the angle bisector, because of our, our converse. This one over here, because it's on the angle bisector, we know that it's equidistant. 7x plus 3 has to equal 8x. And so you can subtract 7x and you get x or 1x. So x equals 3. 
So over here, same thing as up above, but algebraically. This right here is equidistant. And I know it's equidistant because... So the, this point is the same distance from this line as it is from this line, and we have those right angle marks. So 3x minus 5 must equal 2x plus 5. Because equidistance tells us they're angle bisectors, and angle bisectors tell us they have equal angles. So I solved and I got x equals 10. Lastly, do you have enough information to conclude that AC is the angle bisector? Well, we have these congruent segments, but I don't know that this angle and this angle, well, they're congruent. The problem is, is that we have angles side side, and that would not be enough to prove those triangles congruent. The difference between what we have here and what we have here is that we have right angles, right angles, right angles. So we don't know that they represent the distance of the sides because they're not right angles. Now, we've been talking about points of concurrency. And so when we have all of our angle bisectors meet, they intersect at what's called the in-center. So I constructed my angle bisectors. How we did that is you make your, your arcs. Make an arc, make an arc. Come up with these two points. And then you make your compass the same size and then you make an arc so I made my arcs up here arc and then an arc and then I drew it from there to there so that's one of my angle bisectors you make your arcs if you need to look back at what we did the first time we did these constructions go for it so different from the circumcenter this time the in center they all overlap and they overlap so you can make the triangle the circle inside the triangle the in center and so now the distance from the in center to the sides distance from the in center to the sides is equal so we know that pd is equal to pe and pf cuz those are all the radii of the circle all the distances there now people sometimes get this confused with them looking like perpendicular bisectors because they're perpendicular. But notice that this right here is not in the middle of this whole thing, so that's not bisecting. It is perpendicular, but that's because it's representing distance. So, if we have PF, PF is 32, so then DP has to be 32 because they are all the same distance from the sides because you can make the circle. because so we have the in-center. So DP is also 32. And that's, again, based on we know it's the in-center. This one's a little trickier. They gave you point G is the in-center. And G is the same distance and the same distance and the same distance. Um, and so I made that be X. All of those are X. And because we want to find DG... I'm going to find FG first because I know this 12 and this 13 make up a right triangle over here. 12 and 13. And X. So I made a little Pythagorean theorem because I had a right angle. So 12 squared plus something squared X squared equals 13 squared. That's 144 and 169 and so you could subtract 144 and you get 25. Square root of 25, square root of both sides, you get plus or minus 5, but again, we ignore the negative because it's distance. And so this side equals 5, and then dg has to equal 5 as well.